So what are the four main Wiccan tools and what do we use them for? Hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com and if you're new to this channel and you want to learn how to be a witch or a Wiccan, hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss anything. In this video, I'm going to go through what each of the four tools are and what we use them for. So first up, the four tools represent the four elements. If you're familiar with the four elements in West, the Western esoteric tradition, you'll know they're there, that they're earth, water, fire, and air. And we work with those energies a lot in Western magic. Depending on what tradition you're in will determine what symbols go with what element because there are differences depending on tradition. I'm going to start with the pentacle or the pentagram. This is a symbol of earth and manifestation. So what we use the pentagram for is to bring things into the manifestation to symbolize that manifestation. It's a feminine symbol. So it's the symbol of giving form to something in the manifest world. And we will often put um, either herbs on it or a petition on it. If you're doing petition magic, if you're doing having an amulet or you're making a talisman, we'll put it on the pentagram to bring the energy and what we're after what we're trying to achieve into manifestation. So any spells, candle magic or anything that we've got herbs or anything we will use, we'll often put them on the pentacle or near it uh, to bring it into manifestation. Next up we have the symbol of water, also a feminine symbol, and it is the cup. The cup represents the feminine because it is very womb-like. It's a container, so that's where things are being formed on the astral sense, being formed. And it's really about the flow, so you're, it's flowing energy. So the energy is flowing down into manifestation, flowing out. If you're doing something where you're putting something out there like healing, it's about the flow. And it's feminine and it is like a miniature cauldron in many ways. But what we use it for mostly is apart from the flow and bringing in the energies and flowing, the energy is flowing, it, ha it contains beverage. So in rituals, it will either usually contain wine, uh, depending on what type of uh, ritual you're doing. So if, say for example, if it's a Sabbath and you're doing Imolk, it might contain beer because that's associated with bread. It really depends on what you're doing as to what actually is going, what beverage is going to be in there. So it could be wine, it could be milk. If you're doing a daily practice, it may just be water. It can be uh, grape juice. If you don't drink alcohol, any kind of beverage that you're using in your ritual. Next up, we have the athame, which is in many traditions, the symbol of air, but in some traditions, it's the symbol of fire. So again, it really just depends on what tradition you're following. The athame is like the miniature sword. And what you'll notice about the athame is that it's, it's a double-edged sword. So there's two sides to the sword and it cuts both ways. It clears the energy, so it cuts through the energy clearing away that which is not wanted. You, we can project energy through the sword again to cut through and clear the space. It's generally used when we're casting a circle to draw the pentacles or pentagrams in each quarter to banish the energies that we don't want to attend the circle. And that's not just the outer stuff like, you know, any sort of negative energy that might be around the place, uh, which is like negative thoughts, thought forms, negative energy from what's gone on uh, during the day, and also your own negative energy. Uh, so you, you're working to leave that at the door, so to speak, of your circle uh, when you enter in that sacred space. So the athame will be used to clear and banish 
if you are cleansing an object for to be a talisman or an amulet you may also use your athame as the implement of air to cleanse and clear away the any negative energy that it may contain next up and that's a masculine um, element too the next masculine element is fire the wand in many traditions represents fire in other traditions it represents air so again it depends what tradition you are following as to which element it will belong to the wand is about fire which is about passion so it's about projecting and bringing in that that energy it's bringing in that that juice or bringing in or directing the the chi energy um, into something so many people will cast the circle with the wand in order to charge the circle many people will use the wand to charge an amulet or charge a talisman with the energy that you're wanting to project into it when you're using it as the fire implement the masculine symbols and the, the masculine tools are about directing energy the feminine tools are about receiving energy and doing something with it so you have the giving and the receiving energies working together in order to create a third it's the polarity but it's also about the active and passive force and that reconciling force that the two of them when the two of them come together uh, create that reconciles those two energies together in order to form creation so that's where the esoteric uh, law of three comes in to magic and into wicca and witchcraft if you want to find out more about how you can train as a witch or a Wiccan and you're feeling quite overwhelmed about all of the information that's out there, what to do, how to get started and how to keep going, I have a 12 month training program that is designed especially for those of you who are beginning on the path and want to take it more seriously and actually train to be a witch. The details of that 12 month program that you can join anytime is in the description field below. Otherwise, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and comment. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com and I'll see you on the next video. Blessed be.